Welcome to First Steps in E-Learning. This will be a practical look at what e-learning is and how to integrate it into your classroom. The wiki where all notes for this presentation is contained is wingsofthedragon.wikispaces.com Who am I? Well, I'm a teacher. I teach Year 5 students, that's 9 and 10 year olds here in New Zealand. Um, I'm a mum of two adult children, both of whom are, are attending uh, university. And I'm someone who's passionate about technology and passionate about teaching and learning. And I have the joy of being able to integrate both those passions in my daily uh, work life. The goal for this session is for you to return to your, be able to return to your classroom with an idea of a Web2 tool that you can start to begin integrating into your uh, daily, weekly classroom life as part of your daily and weekly work that you're doing. Hopefully uh, this will be a very practical session where you will end up with this practical knowledge. Why first steps? Well, so many of us attend conferences and we see and attend uh, workshops with speakers who excite us with what they're doing, who give us new ideas and we go back to our schools and we kind of lose momentum, we lose steam, we don't know what to do next or what to do first. So here's, our, here's a first step, here's some ideas for first steps in um, e-learning. The first step of course is to actually discover what e-learning is. When I first started teaching, I was an ICT teacher, and in that role, I worked with teachers and students throughout the school. I would liaise with teachers, find out what it was they wanted their students to learn, and then I'd work with the teacher and students in the computer lab, and they'd learn a skill. For instance, how to use PowerPoint, perhaps how to use Word, how to... Uh, Ed, uh, not edit, but um, create text and highlight it and change the font. Just those really technical things. And at the end of the session, they'd go back to their classroom and sometimes they'd never touch the software again. E-learning, by contrast, concentrates on the learning. It looks at what you are doing and it looks at what your curriculum is and then it looks at how you can integrate some technology into that so instead of focusing on the tool after all we don't focus on with how someone's holding a pen if they're just doing some draft writing um, we we focus on the learning that we want to happen and bring the tools in to enhance and to reinforce that learning. It's a little bit similar to M-learning, which is starting to uh, make strides in, in many areas. M-learning takes that E-learning out into the world. Field trips, uh, outdoor ed, experiments. There are a number of places that are using a mobile device um, is extremely well suited and it just expands where you can do this learning. So e-learning uses a lot of digital equipment. Our computers are probably the first thing that come to mind but we could also use a digital video camera, digital camera. We might use um, things like an iPod touch that connects wirelessly to the internet. We might use a cell phone and the cell phones these days are fantastic. You can record 
audio, you can record video, you can take photographs, um, you can create a digital kind of diary of what you were doing, especially if you're out and about. Um, we might use a digital voice recorder of some sort um, that to record aspects of work that uh, children are doing. But it all comes down to where do you start? It's really hard to know sometimes where to start and we get bogged down with trying to decide which which aspect or which web two tool we are going to use and we never get started. Contrary to what you might think, I think it's really important to start with some questions around your curriculum delivery. This is an example of um, the top part of um, a curriculum plan, um, or sorry, it's not even a curriculum plan, it's actually the whole part of our whole plan for term four of this year. And you can see the topic is patterns. And as soon as I started looking at this particular plan, I started to get ideas in my head, well, I could use paint. Um, or a painting program and children could draw, um, create patterns in that and then replicate them to show different patterns. Perhaps we could take some uh, photographs of things like leaves and compare the patterns on one leaf to the patterns on another leaf. So you see that I'm starting to think about how I'm going to integrate technology but I'm still focused on the big picture which is the over, overarching theme for our term, patterns. Very important to start with the planning, with your actual curriculum planning, and work backwards. And choosing the tool. Well, what do you do? There are so many tools out there that we can choose. Um, it's, it is important to narrow it down, and if you go to the uh, support wiki for this presentation, there is a whole section on Web 2.0 tools that you can have a look at and do a bit of experimenting. However, don't be like me. I try to, I, I have my fingers in all sorts of pies as far as Web 2 is concerned. And it's a, it's a, something that I often do is try to introduce too many things at one time. Choose one or two things and concentrate on those. Give your kids a term. Ten weeks is a good time to embed in one or two different types of Web2 tools. They'll be confident. You don't need to then worry about them for the rest of the year. They will keep doing that and you can start adding things. And you'll find that the more things they become confident in, the quicker you can add them. But those first one or two, spend some time, quality time, working on them important that you play with it. You need to have a go at playing and experimenting with the tool and then the kids can start playing and experimenting with them and it's a really good idea if they see that you are having a go as well. I'm going to give you an example uh, from my own class and this is our uh, new class blog. So I, I started the year using YouTube blogs and our kids, my kids found them quite cumbersome to use and then I came across KidBlog and KidBlog is fantastic and I am blogging as well as them. And the best thing about this is that my kids have been blogging, are starting to blog during their holidays. They're talking about what they're doing and so I have responded and talked about some of the things that I have been doing as well. This is a really great easy blogging platform and you can let the kids just have a go at it. You can do a lot of moderating, you can moderate all the comments so you, there's nothing untoward happening and it's a very easy and slick interface. What equipment do you need? You can actually start integrating e-learning into your classroom with one computer. One computer is all you need. It's great if you've got lots of other things, but if you've just got one computer, you can still start integrating it. And when we get on to classroom management, uh, you'll, you'll see I've got um, already one idea up about how you can uh, manage one computer around a reading, a reading program. Other equipment in the classroom could be interactive whiteboard. Um, 
it could be a digital camera you might have some portable devices you might have an iPod touch you might have some other iPods that you use as um, a, as a, a listening post where you record you save uh, stories onto the iPod and then the kids can listen to it the thing about the iPod they can hold it in their hand two people could listen at the same time and they're listening to they can listen to a story together um, you might have an old laptop. I do a lot of scrounging and I'm quite um, happy to ask people for old computers. So I expanded my official four computers uh, to six desktops. I am using some of my own personal um, equipment. So I've got some um, older laptops that, that belong to me and one of my parents has donated some laptops so i don't have all new stuff i have scrounged and borrowed and begged and am just i'm just using whatever i can find classroom arrangement can be quite important depending on what your classroom looks like the size of your classroom the age of your kids the um, um, a number of kids you have in the classroom will depend on how you arrange your classroom. Last year I made some radical changes um, f and I based them or I was inspired by a wiki called Inspired Classrooms and I did some rearranging. I had been uh, working with children in groups that rotated around the classroom, there was a lot of traffic, there was a lot of noise, there was a lot of time being wasted and how kids moved around the classroom. And I then changed and I set it up so that there were six groups in my classroom and each group had a computer and they were able to do work uh, in different, different ways and it worked quite smoothly with uh, not a lot of traffic happening um, and there was a lot more integration and interaction um, with the computers. This year my classroom is quite different and it's a bigger room, it's a different shaped room and I have space to expand and to move out. So I have um, th my computers in three different areas. I also have some different arrangements in my classroom with different groupings. Some kids, um, there are some uh, groups of three, groups of two. Some kids choose at different times to work on the floor. They like to lie on the floor, sit on the couch. Um, they like to be sometimes uh, work on um, with little coffee tables that I've got in the classroom. They sometimes work using the interactive whiteboard, the Mimeo that I have in my classroom. Um, and they work in different areas in the classroom and on different computers. When it comes to doing things like movie making, they much prefer to use the Macs. They, iMovie being a lot more intuitive and easier for, for them to understand. And um, here's a delightful shot of a couple of my kids using uh, my iPod Touch to access the internet to find out some information for some research that they're doing. We were doing a, um, a topic on space. I also had loaded onto the iPod Touch some videos that they could watch and listen to um, about the subject. So what do you do now? We've talked about what e-learning is. We've took. I've mentioned some of the equipment that you can use. I've talked a little bit about uh, the classroom arrangements that you can do. I think the point at this point is to go to the website, the wiki that supports this. And on this website, wingsofthedragon.wikispaces.com, if you go to the first step section, this is where you can click on some links to take you to different areas. There's a, there's a whole page about Web 2.0 tools that you can look at. So if you're not familiar with some of them, um, there's plenty there for you to play with, to um, experiment with, and the list will grow. Um, you could go and uh, check the personal PD section out. And this is just uh, for people who, like I was, um, when I was starting out on my, my e-learning journey, I felt I was 
sort of wandering in the wilderness a little bit. I didn't have people I could relate to. And so I um, connected up with Twitter and suddenly there was a wealth of knowledge. There were people I could talk to and I did most of my professional learning via Twitter, talking with people, um, looking at their websites, interacting with them in that way. So that was my, uh, for me, that kept me going, that kept me revitalised, vitalised, I'm not sure if that's a word, but it kept me going uh, and it was fantastic for me. There's a section on classroom um, arrangement ideas with a link to the wiki that I mentioned before. Um, there's a section about um, hardware and equipment, um, some that's necessary, one computer, because that's all you need, but what some of the other types of equipment are that maybe you haven't thought of. And there's a section on classroom management, and I think that's a really important um, section. How are you going to manage your sessions? And when you go to that um, page, you will see uh, a wall wish a wall in action. And this is what it looks like right at the beginning. And this is my very first suggestion. Uh, one computer, you could assign small groups for blogging um, as part of your reading program. Uh, perhaps two groups of three per day. And if you do reading over um, five days, you'll get through 30 kids. That's your whole class in one week. So every week your kids can be blogging as part of their reading program. Um, it could be part of your writing program. It could be part of topic. It could be various other things that you could use. Um, if you go to this website and when you look at the Web 2.0 tools, there are links to various um, websites, for instance, to my classroom wiki. So have a look, see what I'm doing. Um, to my maths wiki. Um, you don't need to replicate that. Feel free to connect to that. It's sort of aimed at about year five level. If you've got year three, four, five, six students, even year seven, eight students, you want to connect to a maths wiki, you want to um, have your your students start to use one without you creating it, feel free to use my maths wiki. Um, it's, it's there, it's on the web, and it's for anyone to use. Thanks for listening. I've got thanks for participating, but this is the quick version to go online. Um, you can contact me at any of these ways, by mail, um, by email, through the um, wiki spaces, through Twitter. Um, if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you.